Hello and welcome to this week's PB Newscast. Coming up, a new wave of advanced cell efficiency gains. India's latest PV auction drives tariffs to record lows and the latest PV inverter market roundup. As we saw in last week's program, there's been a series of cell efficiency announcements made recently. This past week has seen even more, including news from Heliotech. Fraunhofer ISE Callab has certified a 9.8% cell efficiency for Heliotech's tandem organic thin film solar cell, a figure close to the best rating achieved using amorphous thin film modules. The new record is the third OPV record in a row set by the company, which intends to begin production during the second part of next year. This could lead to active module area efficiencies of over 9%. Equipment specialist Roth and Rao has produced a monocrystalline wafer using heterojunction technology that has achieved 20.14% efficiency. The results are being verified by Fraunhofer ISE. And IMEC, in conjunction with its industrial affiliates, has developed a small area interdigated back contact silicon solar cell that has demonstrated a conversion efficiency of 23.3%. Work will now focus on developing a large area and production viable cell and process steps. The organization used an N-type based float zone silicon substrate coupled to an array of carefully selected process steps. India's Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has awarded PV project contracts worth 350 megawatt to 28 developers in its latest national solar mission auction. Projects in Batch 2 of Phase 2 were allotted by a reverse bidding process and have an initial completion deadline of March 2013. The average tariff bid was just 8.7 Indian rupees per unit, a 27.5% fall from the corresponding figure for Batch 1. This dramatic drop mirrors the international trend of falling PV equipment prices which, according to consulting firm Bridge to India, has enabled developers to consider capital costs as low as 90 million Indian rupees for every megawatt installed. The auction's results illustrate just how quickly the cost of solar in India is closing in on that of coal, and if prices in India continue to fall at the current rate, this cost difference could disappear completely by 2014 or 2015, according to Bridge to India. China's National Development and Reform Commission has revealed that the government is doubling the surcharge for solar and other renewables to 0 0.008 renminbi per kilowatt hour. The tariff was raised to cover the premium that utilities pay for renewable electricity and came into effect on December the 1st. The move to raise the surcharge rate has considerably boosted the medium-term outlook for solar in China and led to notable stock market jumps for Suntech, JA Solar, Yingli Green and several other Chinese PV firms, and should increase developer confidence for further growth downstream. The surcharge doubling is the latest legislative measure taken by the Chinese government to help achieve its ambitious goal of increasing the proportion of non-fossil fuels in its coal-dependent energy portfolio to 15% by 2020. The US International Trade Commission has approved the investigation requested by the Coalition for American Solar Manufacturing into unfair trading practices on the part of Chinese module manufacturers, which could lead to the introduction of US trade duties. The decision, a unanimous vote in favour of the investigation, decreed that there is indeed reason to believe that Solar World and its six co-members and US manufacturers and industry in general have been harmed or stand to be harmed directly by the imports of Chinese-made cells and modules into the US. The US Department of Commerce will continue to conduct its anti-dumping and countervailing duty investigations on imports of these products from China, with preliminary findings due on or about January the 12th next year, and its preliminary anti-dumping duty determination due on about March the 22nd, 2012. Senior executives from 14 major Chinese PV manufacturers recently gathered to set out a coordinated plan of defence in response to the prospect of countervailing duties, which is covered in detail on the PV Tech website.
Global inverter market woes would seem to be directly linked to the German market, according to a new report. The third quarter of the year saw the PV inverter market fall by over 20% year-on-year, greatly affected by the 50% decline in PV revenues seen in the usually stable market of Germany. Despite the fact that inverter prices saw some stability in the third quarter, inverter ASPs remain around 15% lower than they were in 2010. Germany's reduction in inverter shipments by over 1 gigawatt on the same period in 2010 was a major contributor to the 8% reduction in global shipments, according to the report. But the news isn't all bad. Global inverter shipments increased for quarter one and Q2 of 2011, with the decline in revenue being brought about by the reduction in ASPs. And what's more, report authors IMS is projecting inverter shipments to continue to grow, passing the 25 gigawatt mark by the end of the year, in response to new incentives in Asian markets and a last-minute rush to complete installations in Germany before the January 1st, 2012 cut in the fit. Well, that's it for this week's programme. Tune in next week for more news updates, opinions and industry analysis. Next week will be our last newscast before the Christmas break. And we'll be back on January the 13th, as usual. Keep up to date in the meantime by checking out the blogs and latest news or by following us on Twitter at PV underscore tech. Thanks for watching. <laughs>